let's be honest, there's something about building a network rack that's just, yeah, perfect. I love building a network rack. It's just one of those things. That's the tech stuff that I love. So when it came time to build this rack for my Grand MA lighting console, I thought this is the perfect opportunity to have some fun. Upstairs, I've got a massive 48U rack, but I need to build this rack because I've got a production coming up that needs some tech. I think the best place to start is for me to explain what I wanted to be able to achieve out of the rack. So well, I wanted a large switch, my current setup has a small switch, which is kind of working. I'll show you that in a moment. It wasn't doing what I needed. It wasn't enough ports. It needed to be bigger. I needed to be able to put the show Mac in here and another Mac mini. This is the server running all of the web stuff that I need to be able to access. They needed to go in the rack. They needed a home and a safe place. I also needed Wi-Fi, so I've got a unified access point in here. I didn't need the coverage to be large. I just need some access so that when I'm here with the Mac, I can talk to the rack and get communication. One of my key things was PoE. You need an access point, it's got PoE. I've got network switches, they need PoE. So I got a 48 port PoE switch. So let me start by showing you my current setup that I've got before I built the rack. And then let's go back to me building it because this is gonna be an adventure. So this is the new kit that I've bought. And next to that is what I'm calling my mini setup. This is my production setup. So I take this on the road with me, wherever I'm going with my MA. It's got all the stuff that I need. So I've got a Mac mini, um, network switch, and the Unify USG. I've got one of them. And then down there on the floor is another Mac. That also needs to go in the rack. But this isn't enough because I've had to expand with some additional Unify switches. So I want to make this all nice and fancy. Now that you've seen the setup, you know what I'm working with. It is a disaster. So hopefully this thing can solve it. It's definitely heavy. So what did I purchase? So I've purchased a 12U standard size width, 19 inch or whatever it is, with wheels, casters. I'm not sure how good the casters are going to be, if I'm honest, but this is what I've purchased, so we'll find out. It's adjustable in, like, depth, so hopefully that'll be okay, and I could just make it as small as possible. That way, it'll fit in the back of my car. So this is what you can see in the box. Wheels and doodads. Oh, these are some serious casters. This is actually going to be okay. I was worried that the casters might be some cheap crap. I was worried that they weren't going to be very substantial and take the weight. Okay, so continuing on, there's actually not much left in the box. Yeah, that happened, didn't it? Other side of pieces, actual frame size. That probably makes sense. So that's going to be the size of it, kind of fitting in the frame. But there you go. It's not that tall. It's not that wide. It'll work. So those are all the components of the rack. I've just got them down here. I've not thought this one through, as you can tell. I'm just sort of winging it. We're going with the flow. I don't think I'll bore you with the entire setup of the rack. Let me show you these wheels. These are quite chunky. They look actually quite good. They're strong, they cast around there, and they've got a big brake on them. So hopefully they'll be okay. We'll put them on last, I think. But for now, I need to work out how to put this together. So let's go with the time lapse. Right, can I just say, that's a lot of bolts. Okay, so I've got the core frame assembled, and actually, to be fair, it's pretty strong. It was a little flimsy when I was putting it together. I need to put these angle brackets in, I think. I might put them in, I might not, I don't know. I am concerned by the amount of leftover screws. I know I need a lot for these, but there's a lot of them. I'm sure it'll be fine. Network switch time. So I've bought a 48U unified network switch. This is overkill for what I need. Probably something like a 24 port or a 16 port would have done. But the reason I bought a 38 port, no 38 port, 48 port switch is because I think this can go in my main rack. But essentially that's looking a little full. And this was from eBay, so it's not brand new. Not a brand new network switch, doesn't really matter. It's got a bit of cosmetic damage, but it's about to go and spend some time out in some mud and stuff. But yeah, then I plan to put it in the network rack and replace the existing one that's in there. So network switch, that's upside down. Here's the network switch. It's definitely heavy. It's actually really heavy. It is a bit cosmetically damaged, but I'm not that bothered. Me here from the edit. You know where I'm saying it's cosmetically damaged? Turns out that was the least of my problems. Um, only half the ports work. So the first 24 work perfectly fine, PoE everything. The next 24, no PoE. So I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's like a bad power adapter, a bad module. Anyone got any thoughts? Do let me know, because otherwise I'm returning this. It was a steal though, it was only like 250 or something, whereas they like go for 400. Should we put it in the rack? 
you want to see it in the rack. Okay, so this is everything that's got to go in the rack. Mac Studio, Mac Mini, two Unify USGs. One is acting as the gateway, that's this top one. Bottom one, it is the bottom one. Yeah, the bottom one is actually running some custom firmware. I got a load of these for cheap. So I flashed them with some Linux equivalent that runs on them and they're running some custom firmware I wrote. And then I've got the 48 port switch. I've got a rack shelf, which has got some grills in it. So something like that. Yeah. That'll work out. Um, I haven't worked out the power situation. My hope is just cable, ties, regular extension lead, stuff like that. But let's get in the rack and let's see what happens. So I haven't quite got everything I need, but I've got most of the cables. I haven't got one for this. So I'll just put all this in and we'll go with that for now. But we'll get there, we'll get there. So got a six socket extension lead. I'm literally just going to put that back here, I'm thinking. Cable tie here, cable tie over there. That'll be that. This is just me sort of cabling it up, which is a little boring. So let me cable it all up, tidy it all up, and then I'll show you all around what's happened. That's the rack all built. It's not perfect by any means, but it's something that I'm quite pleased with. I think it looks okay. It looks okay, and it'll do the job. It's not got to be perfect. I haven't cable tied this cable in, which is for the USG, because I'm going to do this one and run the cable the same. But I've just sort of ran some cables down the sides, and then round the back, done a bit of cable management. Not much, but I'm happy with it, and I think it looks relatively good. I think this is a wrap for this video. There are some stuff that needs to go in down here, and I'm thinking I'm going to get some sort of patch panel-y thing there so that I can map the HDMIs and the USBs and stuff, make it a little more of a practical enclosure. But I'll leave that for another video. So thank you for watching, and I hope you've enjoyed. It's been a quick one. I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.